What's up out there? So I took my Ice Crash Juggernaut and made it into a Slayer. Well, moreover, what I did was I took my, I think I had a Cyclone Slayer or something like that started off. It was halfway through the campaign. I ended up taking the POB that I developed for my Ice Crash Juggernaut and regret orbing a bunch of stuff off of the Slayer build that I had going and formed this. So we'll dive into the alleyways here and go take a look at this. We'll run this. I am... This is tier 16. I have not been running tier 16. I am currently only level 83, but for purposes of this video, I thought I would just run a quick map here and show this build off a little bit, see how it does, stretch its legs. I am not necessarily, normally I do stuff like this right after I just leveled up, but um, we'll give it a, a quick look here and see how it runs. I run a lot safer maps like i usually try to run nine or ten levels below what i'm at so i'm at 80 what am i at 83 so i'd be running like level 73 maps right now uh to level up normally but for the video i just figured i'd run through here and do something a little more challenging and see how it goes and as you can see this thing is just kind of stomping through everything uh i finished the campaign in about eight and a half hours part of that was because I had the POB uh, set up and, and kind of honed out with the um, jug version of this. And now that I've, so I, I already had it, I knew where a lot of the uh, uh, nodes were gonna be on the passive tree, not necessarily everything. And I did rework a bunch of stuff, uh, uh, took some different routes with this one. Because it's Slayer, it's a little bit different. Uh, you're starting at a different point on the tree for one and for two. As I played this, I don't know that I would say that they are um, optimized or better routes or anything, but it just felt better to go that direction with this side than it did with the Juggernaut version of it, if that makes sense. Uh, not necessarily because it's a Slayer build, it just it just felt different. It just felt like it was that was the path that I wanted to take. Let's see if I, hopefully I don't die on this. I think I fought this thing once and I did die to it, so we'll see. And it's Maven Witnessed for whatever that's worth. So it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, yep, yeah, we're done. That's that. So, the build is doing really well. And in my opinion, the build is doing very well. So, what I have is uh, Ice Crash on a Slayer. We'll get into the passive tree. But I've got Ice Crash, Overexertion, Melee Fizz, Fist of War, Pulverize, and Life Tap. I may not need to Life Tap this. Like, if I take this out, I don't, well, I don't have enough uh, mana regen, so I'd have to come up with something to fix that. But I may not necessarily need to Life Tap it. I do like Life Tapping it because then I don't have to worry about my mana. So that would be a difference there. Uh, up here, we've got Automation with Molten Shell and Precision. It's I'm not running Automation for... I don't have this socketed here because of automation, but precision, I just happen to have a socket open. It is not covered by automation, but you get the idea. So I didn't, it, just the coloring and the linking and everything just is what it is, but I've got precision for extra, extra accuracy. Down here, we've got leap slam, faster attacks, melee fizz, and life tap. Over here, we've got auto exertion, intimidating cry, rallying cry, and seismic cry. So I also have a ring that gives me curse enemies with frostbite on hit. So that's why this socket is empty is because I don't have to worry about that anymore. I just put that on uh, since I'm at finally hit level 80, I was able to put that on. Uh, the belt that I've got has increased global fizz damage. That's why I've got it. Plus it's also got increased elemental damage, a little bit of resistance stuff on it. Uh, this is not micromanage optimized or anything in any way, shape or form. I did spend a little bit more time doing some optimization and picking better gear. So I have, I got all my implicits on here. Like we've got exerted attacks, uh, attacks exerted by seismic cry deal more damage, increased action speed, global accuracy, cold damage to attacks. We've got melee hits, have a chance to fortify, global physical damage, increased attack damage, increased area of effect, stuff like that. Uh, I do have level 85 gear for like a chest piece, uh, for the gauntlets i still have some bad boots and or older or, uh lower level boots or lower uh item level boots lower item level helmet stuff like that so i've spent a little bit of time optimizing it uh defensively we've got all the resistances fairly well chaos res is short except 
it's still short when I run my flask, but it's it's a little better than it was. It's not perfect, but I did spend a little bit more time with it than I did on my uh, jug version. Now, one of the things that I spent time on with this is going into Frozen Legion. When I put the last video out, somebody commented on this. I had actually tried Frozen Legion out, not in this build, but I tried Frozen Legion out as a main skill. I did not realize that it's got this cooldown on it, so you gotta wait for these charges to build up. I actually tried that as a main skill for a, a moment, and you might be able to make it work if there's a lot of cooldown recovery. I'm not sure, but somebody commented on my last video about with for the Ice Crash Jug about using that in a six link. So I've got an attempt at that here. We've got Frozen Legion with Hypothermia, Added Cold, Pulverize, Cold Pen, and Faster Casting. Now, the only reason fa Faster Casting was the only blue support gem that would fit in here. There was nothing else that was compatible. So it, and I didn't feel like recoloring everything. It was the three green and two red that I needed. I didn't feel like fighting with the colors. So I just kind of left it at that for the time being. So that's why faster casting is in here. It's not important. It's not meant to be here necessarily permanently. Uh, whenever I feel like changing it around, I will. Somebody mentioned, I think Mathel or somebody was running this as a secondary skill for extra DPS or whatever. And you get a chance to freeze enemies. So supported skills have plus 20% chance to freeze enemies with hypothermia. This is not whatever Mathel's setup was. I was looking around. I didn't, I wasn't able to quickly find whatever his setup was. So this is just my setup on this. Uh, definitely, again, it's not optimized. It's not necessarily ready to go, but I wanted to try it out and see how it does. It's actually not bad for a spell. Uh, I was, I'm kind of surprised at how much damage it does. So my normal ice crash does 82,000 DPS. It's on the tool tip. I know it's not accurate, but it's on the tool tip. I'm doing 82, 83,000 DPS. If I look at this frozen sweep, it's doing 25,000. That's not necessarily a lot, but it's got a chance to freeze. And every time you kick this off, it's got a bunch. I've, I've actually noticed that when I kick that thing off, like on a single target, it does a pretty good amount of damage in one shot. And it can call because I've got, uh, on the ascendancy for the slayer, I've got that 20% cull and it freezes. So if I'm, if I'm fighting something, that's like a thicker rare or something like that. I'll end up using this during the fight for the most part. I'm just using this, uh, the main ice crash for my clear skill. And then using this frozen legion when I'm fighting something a little bit thicker and I need a little bit more damage or try to freeze it or something like that. And, I will spend some time on I like this build. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. I cleared the campaign in eight and a half hours with this, which is not that impressive, but when I normally take 10, 10 and a half hours, shaving two hours off with this because I can just slam down and kill the half the screen is really cool. On the passive side, uh, we'll start off with the Ascendancy. I opted for Bane of Legends, so I can't take reflected fizz damage. That's one of the big bonuses here. The other big bonus is Headsman, where you get this 20% cull. You also gain 10% increased attack speed when you kill a rare or unique enemy. I like that. And on the way over here, you pick up attack damage and increased attack speed there. Uh, we also get increased damage and area of effect over here. And I took Impact because this gives you global accuracy, which we'll need, as you'll see here in a minute. We also get increased area of effect per enemy killed. I'm not sure if the 0.4 meters to melee strike range counts because there is a tag for strike skills. I don't know if this is specific to that or if it works with AOE and attack, I'm not sure, but you also deal more damage based on proximity, stuff like that. I thought this was a good one to take. I am really interested in masterful form where your endurance charges are equal to maximum frenzy charges with plus one max frenzy charges. I have not uh, specced into frenzy yet, frenzy charges, which we'll talk about, but it seemed like the more appropriate thing to take. Overwhelm has got uh, multi, uh, critical strike. I can't do crit, so it doesn't matter. And Brutal Fervor is cool for leech and everything. I did not want to come over here to Endless Hunger, so I didn't want to mess with that. Basically, my choice is going to be Brutal Fervor for leech or Masterful Form for Frenzy Charges. And I think I want Frenzy Charges. So I came down here through Attack Speed, picked up Art of the Gladiator, Bravery, and Master of the Arena. And we'll go to the left side of the tree first. So I came over here for Eagle Eye for all the accuracy you get. We've got Soul of Steel for increased Ellie Res, armor that you get from there. 
Bloodless for increased life. We got all that picked up. Came down here for Bastion Breaker for the increased fizz damage. We've got Rib Cage Crusher for increased area of effect and attack speed. Got Golem's Blood for regen and max life. We've also got Cloth and Chain because we're right here. And then I'm going to go, I plan on coming over and picking up Disciple of the Slaughter for all the frenzy charges and everything that you get over here. 8% uh, chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill. So we may not, we could probably run Blood Rage at some point. But with chance to gain frenzy charge on kill, I'm, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm gonna have to. Uh, as now on the jug version, I came up this side here because I wanted to pick up. At some point, I had resolute technique, and I also had picked up like uh, Hardy. I did not go up this side this time. I ended up coming over here and grabbing Warrior's Blood, Heart of the Warrior, and Born to Fight, like I did that side. But then I peeled off over here for Measured Fury for the War Cry part, Juggernaut. Then I came up here for deep breaths, continued coming up here so we could get sanctity, which gives a whole bunch of stuff, armor, energy shield, which I don't really care about, but then you get life regen, strength and ints, come up here to dis, uh, discipline and training for max life. Then you come through this Ellie node, you get holy dominion for elemental resistances, increased damage, chance to freeze down here through devotion, which gives you uh, better consecrated ground, which I was running a, uh, I don't think I'm running it anymore. I was running a flask for consecrated ground. I don't think I am, but I don't really care about this. I just wanted to pick this. I came through here because you've got all the life and then you can come over here for 50% increased elemental damage. And that's the left side of the tree. On the right side of the tree, I ended up, this started off as that cyclone build that I was working on and I needed a uh, leech for both mana and life. So I had vitality void and spirit void at one point. I backed out of those. I am planning on putting these two points back in for Vitality Void just so I can keep my Life Leech going. I find that I'm a little bit squishy, so I want to put some Life Leech or Life Regen in here. I also noticed at one point, I just happened to scroll over this, I see that this gives you, Graceful Assault gives you Onslaught. You basically get a chance to get Onslaught, and you get increased armor and evasion during Onslaught, increased effective Onslaught, which Onslaught gives you faster attack speed, which is what I want to work with on like the main focus of putting this on Slayer was to get as much attack speed as possible. And then right next door, you get increased armor and evasion. You also get 15% chance to suppress spell damage if you hit an enemy recently, which you're basically hitting enemies all the time. So that's going to add uh, spell suppression in here a little bit. And then same thing with Juggernaut. I picked up Fangs of Frost. We've got precise techniques. We can't deal crits, but we deal a lot of damage if our accuracy is higher than our life which my accuracy is 33.36 and my life is at 33.26. So I'm probably going to pick up Weathered Hunter at some point. I'm right here. It's three points. So I'll pick that up, get my accuracy boosted up quite a bit. Uh, that way, if I have to take an accuracy hit or something like that, it's not going to like I'm borderline. Plus, I can also get more life if I get the opportunity to. We've also got uh, Winter Spirit up here for gain 10% of Fizz is extra cold. I'm also going to take Flash Freeze. My next level's going into this. So you, the thing about it, you get increased cold damage, increased ailments and stuff like that. The big reason I want to take this is the 15% chance to freeze. So we're at level 83. So there's 84, 85, 86, level 87 over here on Flash Freeze. And then I think to round it out, we'll go to what, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, something like that and then 94, 95 to pick out Vitality Void. So that's probably how I'm gonna round this out. I'm definitely picking up Flash Freeze for my next level. I may do the Frenzy Charges after that, and then uh, I'm undecided which one I wanna do, whether it's Hunter or uh, Disciple of the Slaughter first, but that's gonna be the next several levels for this. But that is my Ice Crash Slayer, and it's, it's really cool. When you get all of the area effects and everything in, it basically fills this half of the screen, well, this big chunk of it from, say, the alleyways portal all the way over here. It fills that entire thing. By the time you've got all the killed recently and everything, that whole, not the spikes, but the actual circle will fill all of that. It's kind of impressive to see that. And... The only thing that I'm really suffering for, I know I need increased life, but I'm up against my accuracy that I need to worry about. Definitely could use some better rolls on my gear, probably swap out the boots and the helmet at some point and all that. But for proof of concept and for the build where it's at, I just plowed through a tier 16 map almost with no trouble. I do struggle here and there with a lot of uh, like fire or 
uh, projectile damage coming in, whatever that is, like the goat men or something like that, they'll kill me off. Or those weird things with the pointy head, those things will kill me off too. But for the most part, like I'm, I'm doing fairly well with this build. If I can get my defensive layers, uh, the damage is there. I'm kind of considering League starting this versus Tech Slam. I'm not sure. I like both of them, and they both have their places. But I'm really enjoying this build, and I think the Slayer is definitely better. So for my Juggernaut that has this, I'm probably going to, I may end up, in fact, I may end up just robbing the, the weapon off my Juggernaut and moving it over here with all the gems and everything, because I think I'm leveled up to use them all. I think some of them are quality, maybe they're leveled up a little bit more, and that mace is better than the mace that I have here. But at any rate, um, I may retool my Juggernaut into something else and try out some other skill with that. Slayer, I think, is the way to go with Ice Crash. You get a lot of damage off of it. You can get fairly fast attack speed. Uh, I don't think my movement speed's all that bad. Uh, the boots definitely don't have as much movement as I want. Yeah, I don't have 30% increased movement speed. A lot of this I crafted off the Horta Crafting Station, so that's kind of why some of it is the way it is. Like I focused on, I don't know, defensive for this or life or cold. That's kind of how I got the mace was with cold damage. But I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a very, very cool build. It's been a lot of fun putting together, and it's it's definitely got a big AOE, a lot of speed in the, the attack. It's fairly, fairly speedy in movement. It's not as slow as some of the other builds I've got. But uh, I'm enjoying it, having a good time with it. That's going to do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.